guys, and we're back. Check this out. I want to show you something. Watch, watch. I'm going to run it. Now, when we last left, we had our players and our missile set up as entities, and that's wonderful. We're going to take a little bit of a break from that today. What we want to do is we want to, if you notice, these bounding boxes. Now, we've been doing some uh, axis-aligned bounding box collision, and so if we let him, he'll bump into him and he'll move him. The missile will move him. But here's the problem with that. With these axis, these boxes being axis aligned, when our missile rotates, or any other sprite for that matter, uh, their bounding box doesn't rotate with them. So that collision area there is uh, screwed up when he rotates. You see he's poking out there in the side. He's really not colliding there. So what we want to do is we want to do the first step. We want to take the first step, and that is we want to rotate uh, have what basically what we want is we want to be able to have a rotated collision rectangle a little bit easier said than done to be honest it's a little more involved than you'd think it would be but we're going to try that we're going to we're going to start that so if you see i've got this little uh page pulled up here and it talks about how to uh, rotate about a point around the origin so uh, we're getting a little formula, a couple of formulas here. We've got x prime and y prime, and that's the new rotated point, the x and y coordinate of the new rotated point. Again, assuming that you're at the origin, uh, is going to be uh, this formula uh, right here. So let's let's create a function to do that. Let's do that in the utils. Let's say function u dot rotate. Call it rotate point. We'll take an x and a y, and we'll take an angle. Okay. And we're going to return. So this, let's say, rotates the given point. And what did we say here about the origin? about the origin the given angle hopefully that makes sense so let's look at the these functions so we got local we'll say <clears throat> let's say x rotated equals and we have that math.cosine and if you think about this this makes a lot of sense angle so think about it. If our angle is 0, then our x value is going to be just fine and the same because we have minus sign, math the sine of uh, the angle times y, and I missed uh, the x here. And then we're going to do the same for the y rotation, but that's going to look a little bit different, as our formula said. Math dot sine of angle times x which is which again makes sense to me anyway when you're rotating and you're at zero degrees your y rotated value is just going to be the same as the unrotated value right because you're not rotated at all so that's a cosine of angle times y so you see that when this angle is zero the cosine of zero is one so then you just have y and then the cosine, the sine of zero is zero, so this goes away, and that should be x. Sorry about that. Um, and the same thing for y here, or x here. When you're not rotated, you're basically just x with none of the y component affecting you. So now what we want to do is let's do a multiple return here, and let's return x rot, uh, y rot. So now we've returned our rotated point. So let's say return rotated. Point. Okay, and um, now that we have this, I'm going to copy it so that if I forget it, I'll still have it. Now, what's the best way to do this? Let's let's create a function here. Let's call it 
sprite. Let's call it poly because we're kind of doing a polygon. Since uh, we're going to have four points and they're not going to always be axis aligned since we'll, they'll be uh, dependent upon the uh, rotation of the object. They'll also be dependent upon the scale. So, you know, there's a number of things to consider here. We could just continually recreate this. And I guess that's what we'll do for now. We'll just recreate it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a shortcut like I did up there for Entity. We'll do a shortcut. And then let's make a, uh, a points uh, array or table. We're going to return that at the end. And uh, let's go ahead and since we're going to do it about the, the origin, we need to translate all our stuff to the origin. So we're not going to have, um, when we do the rotations, we're going to have, uh, those are all going to be about the origin. So that really just means uh, that we're going to have, uh, say, our local, we'll call it X, is going to be uh, we'll we'll start. The, it's it's actually just going to be this, right? So it's just going to be half that since we're doing since we're doing it about the origin. The x is going to be this, and the y are starting y because they're going to be the same. They're just going to change signs because remember we're it's a rectangle. So that's our start in x and y, and now. Uh, when we rotate these, what we'll do is we'll do a function, we'll use a function called uh, love.graphics.poly. And that's going to take a mode, which we're going to do line, and that's going to take a, poly, a polygon, well, actually a, a list of, or an array table of uh, points, x, y, x, y, x, y, like that. So we're going to just go and say, hey, go grab the poly uh, here. So we'll go ahead and draw the regular rectangle here for now. And then we're going to do it. So that's what this episode is going to be about. We're going to try to rotate, have a rotated rectangle that, uh, that uh, rotates along with the sprite itself. So uh, let's also do this. Let's, let's take the angle out for... That transform is just easier to do that way, so we'll just grab the angle. All right, so now what we want to do is we basically want to say the we want to do the rotation. So if we did uh, rotate point, we could do x comma y, and then the angle, right? That's what we put here, okay? But uh, there is a problem, and that is he'll return two values. And really, I guess it's not a huge problem, Rx and Ry. Uh, what we would end up having to do here is uh, just adding these to the array separately each time. And then the other thing, uh, these rotated points, we really need to add an offset to them. So what we could do here is we could say post rotate x offset and then because uh, remember we're rotating about the origin and then we're going to offset it after the fact to put it back where it belongs, where we want it. Um, so then what we could do is just add that on here. So we could say post rotate x offset or zero, just in case it's nil. And then we could do the same here uh, for y offset or zero. So we're adding two uh, uh, 
note the last two parameters are optional allow you to add an offset to the results after they have been rotated i think that's i think that's a good idea So what we'll have here is we'll have this rectangle. I'm going to bring up paint.net. We'll have a rectangle. We'll have an origin because we're going to rotate about this origin, and that origin is going to be 0, 0. Oh, horrible writing, right? Um, so that means that we'll have four points. They're tiny. Four points. And they'll all be the same, basically. They'll be uh, that that half of the width to the left, and then also half of the width to the right, half of the height up, half of the height down. So all that's going to change are the signs of these points. This one will be negative, uh, our negative x and a negative y. This one will be x, negative y. This will be x, y, because remember again, our positive y goes down. And this will be negative x, y. So we'll go in a clockwise rotation. We'll start our air. We'll start with this one. We'll come around and we'll hit these like this, which means our first point here would be this. And uh, I think we're going to just do this sort of a a manual way. There are there are other ways to do it, but. Eh. I'm not exactly that ha really happy about the way this is going to work, but we're just going to do it this way. So we have minus x minus y, which again we've defined up here as half of our width, and we'll also include the scale because we do want to make sure we get the scale correct. Um, and this one's going to be x y or x minus y, and this one's going to be x y. That's three, and we need one more point. And that's going to be minus x, y. So then we can add these in just like this. Yeah, I know. Again, there are, there are other ways to do this, but this is the way we're doing it. We'll stop complaining. R, y, 4. Whoops. R, x, 4. R, y, 4. Like so. And then we'll just return that. And, uh, well, as we said, we can put in post-rotational offsets, which is what we're going to want to do. And I'm going to take this, because that's exactly where we want to be. Remember, we were upper left-hand corner. So we're going to move that point to the center, and that's what that does there. So there's our x value. Right. And let's do a little comma here. And then our y value is going to be this little fella right here. And we'll just paste him in here. Um, let's run that and see what kind of errors we get. Yes, okay. 116, which was where we were looking around here. Um, ah, look at that. Got a comma in a place where I'm not supposed to have one. <laughs> uh, attempt to global u. Okay, we don't have... So we'll say... U. That's under lib utils, I believe. And as you can see, it works! Ladies and gentlemen, we have done it. Now, uh, there are a few things that we could do to make it a little more convenient. You know, that's a lot of crud, which could be really done with some sort of uh, nice little loops or whatnot. But it's really not that much stuff. I think it's okay for now, like I said. Uh, the other thing is we're recalculating this every time we go through this draw loop, which you kind of have to because you really don't know if the angle has changed or not. So uh, you kind of have to do this. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, what we're doing, and we can actually remove this one. 
and then we have this. And see, that's exactly what we want, even though we're still going to have a collision. You see the collision rectangle. It's being drawn. Let's uh, let's do. Let's. I'll tell you what. Until we fix that, let's set the tint color. Set color to. Uh, let's call. Uh, let's see what red, green, blue. Maybe red, green, blue. And then we'll set it to white here. Back to white. Just so we know that those are two different, they're indicating two different things. Yeah, that's not what I really want. I really don't want green, do I? Let's do uh, 64. Let's see what that looks like. Just something to differentiate them. There we go. So there's our non-axis aligned bounding box and then our axis aligned bounding box. I think we've done some good work today. Uh, next time, I'm not sure what we'll do. Uh, we may go into a detection of a collision with a non-axis aligned bounding box. Basically, yeah, uh, that probably isn't going to be too difficult. Probably use something like a separating axis theorem or something like that. Uh, we'll look into that. Uh, and then we also have some things to do with our entity and component system that um, uh, that uh, we need to address as well. Until next time, see you later.